Hello, it's Tom from CoaJoint here and uh, today I'm going to give you a Unity tutorial on uh, finite state machines or my implementation of a finite state machine. Um, if you don't know what a finite state machine is, it's basically a decision making tool for artificial intelligence. So uh, if you're unaware and want to see this video, just have a quick Wikipedia search and uh, you'll see some details on it. Um, I've used finite state machines in my tech demo and um, the reason why I chose finite state machines over behavior trees or decision trees are because I found that my bots were actually um, transitioning between a lot of states and um, or moving between different sort of fixed routines and uh, behavior trees aren't necessarily so good for dealing with those as finite state machines are. Um, so before I show you how I've actually uh, achieved this I'm going to show you what I've uh, created first of all. So I'm creating the player which is represented by this sphere here and you can see a little guard bot going on a patrol route um, as the green guy there. Um, the little stick, you can't see it very well at the moment, but there is a stick pointing out the front of him and uh, that shows you just the direction that he's facing. So if I get close enough to him, he'll um, hear, hear me in a, and went yellow there and uh, then when he actually sees me, he uh, turns red and now he's just chasing me down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out of sight and again then he goes into uh, an investigate sort of state to try and find me again. And if he can't see me, he'll go back to patrolling. He's assumed that he's chased me off quite well. So let's see if I can get him to see me again. So he can transition between different states simply. So that's what I've actually achieved using my uh, implementation of a finite state machine. Um, it's all on the uh, one script on the uh, guard. And uh, now I'm going to go into Mono Develop just to show you how I actually achieve that. So here we are in Mono Develop, and uh, this is my finite state machine script. Um, I've written a little summary of, of the idea behind the script. Um, basically, what we want to do is start all our long running and repetitive tasks when we enter the state, and uh, we implement those tasks with coroutines. So, um, basically, things like hearing and vision checks, we want to perform them every frame, but really, it's doing the same thing over and over again. But sometimes those um, those actually uh, those tasks actually take longer than a frame. So, for example, if we want to check that we saw the player for like 0.2 of a second, for example, um, it would be very difficult to call a function like that in update and um, maintain make sure that we don't keep on calling it when it's already doing a check, for example. So we use coroutines that are basically stuck in a, in a while true loop uh, for the entire time that they're in the state. Um, so it's appropriate to use things like coroutines for uh, these sort of tasks uh, because sometimes as well we want to stop the execution of those tasks uh, so to say run an animation or pause in place or, um, or or basically stop him from moving for example. So coroutines are really good for stuff like that so we use them. Um, I've done a couple of videos on um, coroutines before so if you're unfamiliar with them make sure you um, check out my previous videos. Um, I'll probably put up a link about now. Um, but there's a problem with coroutines in that they're very difficult to stop uh, with the with the uh, the standard Unity API. Um, there is a stop all coroutines method, but um, I've, in my experience, it doesn't really work very well. Um, and um, also, unless you pass a string or unless you start your coroutine using a string, um, you can't actually stop individual coroutines. So the solution to that is actually um, provided by uh, Prime Thirty One, who's got a YouTube channel and also has loads of good products. Um, he's done a coroutine manager which allows you to stop coroutines. So in my previous video I did um experiment with stopping coroutines but um, I discovered that he's um, actually taken it all a step further and created a sort of a job coroutine manager class that allows you to stop and start coroutines at will. So using this we can actually um, start coroutines uh, in the initialization of the state and then interrupt them whenever we want and that's exactly what we want to do. So I think the easiest way to describe this um, is to give you an example. So first of all, let me show you the different states for um, our state machine, which are defined here. So we have patrol, investigate, and alert. And then the um, the, the other important step that I didn't mention above is that we actually use a property to um, to exit and enter states. So we have a private variable, uh, a private state here, and then that's um, made public with a um, a property, a, a state property here. And um, what happens is when, when we set the state, so when we write something like state equals state dot alert, for example, um, we exit, we, we call a method which exits the um, previous state, i.e. cleans up anything that we need to, and then we initialize all of our long-running um, 
um, methods when we call enter state. So let's have a look first of all at uh, when we enter the uh, patrol state here. So we initialize it in awake. So the first thing that's going to happen is we're going to go into the enter state method here. And um, I use a switch statement here to um, to uh, control which state we're actually in. And um, these little blocks of code here, this is us setting up coroutines that are going to run for the whole time that we're in uh, our patrol state. And uh, this where you see uh, C equals new new job, that's using the coroutine manager. So that's uh, that will allow us to actually stop these coroutines um, when we change state or to interrupt them. And um, let me, I'll just show you, um, say, the hearing um, method first of all. And I'll show you hearing is just in a, it's in a while true loop, and then I yield at the end of the uh, the uh, the block, the block of code, and then it will just go back to the start. So we will have a continuous loop of hearing. If we do hear the player, then a action is called, um, which I will show you up here. And that action, I, I just used an anonymous function because it's inconvenient to keep on writing different methods for uh, every single time that we use um, the, the, the hearing method, for example. It's not, um, it's not good coding practice to write different methods for just very slightly different things. So that's what um, hearing's for, excuse me. Um, so when we hear the player, for example, um, as I showed you in the demo before, we change state to state.investigate. But most of the time we're performing the patrolling coroutine here. And um, I'll show you why this coroutine is really useful because it's, it's a very simple procedure which we're repeating over again. We get to a patrol point, we stop for a little bit, and then we move to the next one. So that's exactly what I do. I set the destination. I wait until we get there in this while loop here. When we get there, I um, iterate up um, to the next patrol point, basically, and repeat the whole process. Sorry, and then we wait for a second, and then we repeat the whole process. So very, very simple. Um, but it would be really difficult to achieve this if we didn't use coroutines. We'd have to be using loads of complicated Boolean checks to uh, decide where we were in the patrolling uh, routine. So that's what I mean by a long-running repetitive task. So let's go back to enter state. And let's see what happens when we transition to another state. So when we actually see the player, for example, using the seeing method here, uh, this anonymous method is called, and that changes our state to alert. So what happens then? We exit the patrol state, and that's what we do here. We, when we exit the patrol state, we kill all of the current coroutines running using uh, the, the coroutine manager, of Prime31's coroutine manager, and then we enter the alert state here. And all I do is I change the speed of the uh, the guard, I change its color, and then I initialize as I did in the patrol state. I initialize the vision checking the vision uh, vision checking method seeing here. And then if we if we uh, lose sight of him, represented by that full statement there, then we go to state dot investigate. And that's really all there is to it. Um, if I show you the update, um, there's very little um, content in the update because. All I'm doing in, in the alert state is um, is continuously updating the, um, the the facing direction of the guard, and also making sure that he uh, basically chases down the player there. So I've used the nav mesh here just for simplicity, and that's um, that's really how I set up my finite state machine. Um, if you want a copy of this script, then um, leave a comment in the uh, uh, comments below, and um, I'll be more than happy to put that up on um, the Unity forums. Um, if you have any questions, then um, please feel free to ask. Um, if you like the video, then uh, leave a like, um, favourite, and uh, please subscribe because I've got more videos coming up. And um, thanks very much. Cheers.